Film has been one of the most popular forms of art in the entertainment industry since its introduction in the late 19th century. Since then, it has grown to unimaginable proportions and formed one of the most profitable industries in the world. But there is one job that the public relies on immensely before the film is even ever released, and that is the, the job of the film critic. Today we have a representative of this fascinating work and a respected journalist and interviewer in the studio. This is Greg Russell. He's joining us today in the studio, and I want to welcome you to Celebrate Michigan, the show produced on the campus of Madonna University. I'm Chris Benson. Greg has decades of experience in all kinds of media, and we're going to learn a lot about that from him today. Greg, thanks for being here. You are a uh, frequent flyer on the Celebrate Michigan show. Absolutely. I love it. I get my little badge every year. <laughs> We're glad to give you your wings when you <laughs> <Thank> come. Thank you. <laughs> so I have to know, um, I imagine little Greg Russell, so you're just like you now, but shorter. <laughs> and um, <laughs> as a child, you know, uh -huh. and, and is this something you always, did you know that a film critic was a job at the time? I didn't know that it was a job, but mm -hmm. it was just a thing. Growing up, I loved movies. Okay. My mom used to take me all the time to the theater. We also had a neighborhood theater where on Saturday, she would give my older brother a dollar for both of us to go up there and spend the entire afternoon. Get up there at noon and stay till five, watching and whatever, right. For one dollar. Yep. That's awesome. Yep, and they were even talkies. So I mean, you know, that was good to know. But yeah, it's just something I've always enjoyed. And then even like on Saturday afternoons, whatever movie they happen to have on, I'd watch. So yeah, I just always loved them. And how did you take that love of movies, that passion for movies, and make it into like a career? Well, actually what had happened, this was about 20 years ago. I'd always worked in radio and TV, you know, mm -hmm. here in the Detroit mm -hmm. area. And I was working at that time uh, out at TV 20 doing the news breaks. Well, I got sick. And so I wound up in the hospital, and as it turns out, I had a massive pulmonary embolism. And the doctor told me, she said, you should have been gone a week ago. <sighs> so that kind of makes you think, you know, about a lot of things. So I was just there going, you know what, I want to start doing something that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so I enjoy movies. So while recuperating, I came up with an idea for a movie review show. So once I got out, I presented it to them, and they were going, well, we don't have the production facilities, you know, to do it, but we'll give you a half hour. And it's like, so it'll be my own show? Yeah. It's like. What's the catch? <laughs> right, it was. I was going to like, do I have to give you my firstborn? They're 20, but, yeah. you know, I don't know I'll if do you it. want them now. But, yeah, so started out, you know, doing it that way, and it began just do getting interviews that came into Detroit, and then next thing you know, I was able to get on the junket scene, oh. you know, going back and forth to New York, L.A., and London, and various places around the world, and I've enjoyed it, you know, so much. Well, and... For those who might not be familiar with your earlier work, you mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, being in, on TV mm -hmm. and, and some of those things. Talk to us through that. Tell us about <laughs> um, your upcoming um, or how you came up in the industry, I should say. All righty. Well, I'm a graduate of, at that time, the University of Detroit, now the mm -hmm. University of Detroit Mercy. And I was fortunate. I was radio and TV major. A month before I graduated, WJR-FM, 96.3 FM. Oh, I remember 96.3. Yeah, with the beautiful music. Yes, yes, yes. They were stopping being automated and going live. Oh. So they needed somebody for the evening, and the assistant program director was a U of D grad. So we called the uh, school saying, hey, do you have anybody who's graduating who you know you think is good enough and da-da-da-da? They said, yeah, well, we got this guy. He does all our commercials here and has done other commercials. Long story short, I went over, applied, and got the job. So that was it. My very first time on the radio was on WJRFM at night playing music. Like we said, Montavani, Every Blue Moon. It was so great. You get a Johnny Mathis song and you thought, this Ooh. is so cool. Vocals. <laughs> Love this. And they used to say, you know, people say, well, what's the demo? I said, 65 to up. And now it's like, those are all my friends. So. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, and I heard a couple things in your story that I think are compelling to me as in work with students is, mm -hmm working the night shift mm -hmm. and being willing to take an opportunity. And oh, yeah. so I, it sounds like you were willing to walk through those doors. Absolutely. Like I said, anytime somebody gives you an opportunity, you know, to even just come visit them on set or whatever, do it, mm -hmm. do it. Don't sit up and oh, think about it, da, da, da. No, because you never know what may happen. So it's even like my very first TV job was on a TV show called PM Magazine. Yes. And. It was so funny. It wound up being in the paper how they were looking for a new tipster reporter. And so I called up, said, yeah, I want to apply. Well, as it turns out, so did 2,583 other people. Oh, my gosh. So they, they turned it into a contest, and they had all of us go out and try out. And all you have to do is come up with a great story about, you know, something Detroit or Michigan. Well, 
they had us in line, they had us three deep, so you, you, you could hear what the other two people were talking about. First guy's talking about hang gliding over Lake Michigan, the other guy's talking about going down the sand dunes in Saugatuck. My story was about how to make a Boston cooler. Nice. Yeah, because nice. I could never figure out, you know, why is it a Boston cooler invented in Detroit, but it was invented on Boston Boulevard. Love it. So did that, I walked away thinking, this is not gonna beat swimming with sharks. Two days later, I got a call saying, you were the you one. Were the guy. Oh, and again, being authentic is what I hear you saying mm -hmm. there and going with who you are yeah. and your own experiences. So how has being um, a film critic um, changed over the years? Well, uh, in the beginning it was, you know, strictly film, mm -hmm. where now it's, you know, film, Netflix, Amazon, Apple TV, you know, all streaming services. And also the quickness now of getting your reviews and interviews up. Because it used to be, say, like if we were in L.A. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'd all fly home. And if you weren't on the air until Thursday, that's when your stuff ran. Sure. Now, a lot of us, as soon as you get done with the interview, boom, you go back into your hotel room, edit it, put it up. It's on YouTube, your uh, web page, and every place else. So. Yeah. That's you know one of the main ways how it's changed. And, I, and the, I'm just overwhelmed by the number of ways that we can see movies oh, or yeah. films or programs now. And I imagine that volume, it feels like we've gone at light speed to where we are now. Right. And, I, uh, and it sounds like you have to be very responsive now too to get it out there fast. Absolutely, because the studios look at that. And it's so amazing. Uh, very quick story. Yeah. There was one time I was at one of our award shows I took a photo of Sterling K. Brown from This Is Us, and his manager's a friend of mine, so we got this. So I, when I went back on the show on Friday, I showed the picture since it's an NBC show and we're on Channel 4, and so I said, yeah, this was really great. Pleasure meeting him. When I got done, my phone was beeping. It was his manager, and I picked up and going, yeah, Michael, what's going on? He said, great story, a great shout out about you and Sterling. I'm going, are you in Detroit? And he said, no, I'm in New York, and I'm going, how did you find out about it? They've got ways now of, as soon as you say like a client's name or the name of a movie or whatever. It's ha tagged and, and they know. Yeah. Well, my gosh, I, we've got so many things to get into. I have to go to a break. Just okay. stay right there, don't move. I'm here all and day And you for stay you. right there. We'll be right back and we'll talk more about Greg, his work and how the pandemic affected that. Stay tuned. world when you pick up a book I used to read every night to all the younger kids and let your imagination break free you won't believe how much fun it can be let down your <laughs> experience a world of adventure <laughs> excitement <laughs> and endless possibilities get tangled up in a good book explore new worlds read visit read.gov today I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you. She's a hugger, give her a squeeze. <laughs> Help up the hand. Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. You're killing it, Jane.
Welcome back to Celebrate Michigan. I'm Chris Benson, and today I'm here with film critic and journalist Greg Russell. We're glad you're back with us. Glad you didn't go anywhere. Here. No. <laughs> this is good. This is good. So um, we had so much fun talking in the first segment yeah. about you know being a film critic and, mm -hmm. and your um, meteoric rise to your <laughs> current um, wonderful heights. Thank and you. Um, <laughs> you know we have to talk about the pandemic. Yeah. I, I know it, it happened. It's we're hopefully mm -hmm. at the tail. I feel like knock on wood. Yeah. We're hopefully I mean, we're at the tail end of it. You know. Um, mm -hmm. How did that affect what you do and and all the it, things that you love? It was just a very strange time. I it was March. 12th, I believe 12th or 14th, I was in New York uh, to interview Octavia Spencer for oh. this show <laughs> on You Netflix. just drop these names like, you know, <laughs> oh, I was interviewing Octavia Space, you know, and I'm like a gape, you know, yep. please continue. <laughs> yep, her and Blair Underwood. So <laughs> another one, go ahead. <laughs> and Mike Epps. But no, that, we'll, we'll stop with the names. Thank you. George Clooney, no. Uh, <laughs> but it was when all the stories were beginning to circulate or about what was going on. And I just remember it was just strange because everybody was just kind of like, it was almost like looking at each other like you're an alien. It's like. Yeah. And when we went into the room, they were already saying, okay, no handshakes, you know, with mm. the people like you usually do. And it's like, okay. So I flew home that Thursday and I was supposed to be home for Friday and then Saturday fly to LA for something else. When I was on the plane, I'm looking around at just how everybody was looking. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm gonna cancel LA. But by the time I landed, Netflix had already called saying, this weekend's wow. canceled and everything's kind of canceled, you know, for the near future. And so, yeah, it was just kind of strange, personally, just being home all the time, because it was like, you're used to going and doing things and interacting yeah. with people. And then when the interviews started back up, because we didn't do interviews, I don't think for a month, they became, you know, the famous Zoom interviews. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of funny because usually you would just do say like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Once people were starting to do it from home, we were getting them like four or five times a week. Oh my gosh. So I have my basement set up with my nice background and all like that, which everybody always comes on and goes, oh, that's really cool. It's like, thank you. But yeah, we were just knocking them out. Uh, also in the beginning, it was basically Netflix movies mm. because like you said, stuff that was supposed to be in the theater, they had no idea what they were gonna do right. with them. So you weren't doing any interviews at all. But yeah, Netflix and then Amazon or Prime, yes, as they're yes. called, and Apple and all like that. You know, we just, hey, start putting all their stuff out. Wow, I, you know, we all went through it. We were all seeing those Zoom interviews. Mm -hmm. And I, I noticed at the beginning, it felt very awkward and strange, mm -hmm. but then it was kind of fun to see celebrities in their own, which I was interpreting as their own space. Right. And even though, you know, you can put that, fake background in the back. Right. I was like, oh, that's their that's their house where they are mm -hmm. now. There was one, I wish I could remember who it was, what, what the director's name was. He was at home, I'm interviewing him, and so it's like, I'm looking at you in my little box. Next thing you know, his housekeeper was behind with the vacuum cleaner. The cat walks across, <laughs> yeah. you know. And he's just kind of going, Mom, stop. <laughs> <laughs> He said yeah, she needed a job, so he gave her yeah, one. Yeah, there you go. I mean, but it was it was it felt like a um, a reality show look into yeah. the lives of you know the people that we see on the screen that normally you know they look mm -hmm. so glamorous and now they're just on the other side of Zoom just like us. Right. So that was I thought that was kind of an interesting um, way. Were there any interviews during that time that just stuck with you? You know, from mm -hmm. the Zoom era, I will say the <laughs> Zoom interview era. Yeah, uh, Hillary Swank. Oh, wow. I interviewed her for two movies. And after the first one, then a, a few weeks later, got her for the second. She says, hi, Greg, I'm back. I'm glad to be in the basement with you again. And it's like, I'm glad you're here too. And you know, just, cause like you said, she's at home. So she's relaxed, having a good time. Uh, Tom Hanks, he was in my basement twice. Oh my god! And you gosh. know, so for this, on the second, he's like, yeah, man, I hope to get there and be in the basement with you for real. I said, come on by. Yeah, for sure. Come on by, would love that. And uh, Sharon Stone, she wants to come over and have a drink in the basement. Okay. <laughs> so hey. it's like, hey, who else can beat that? Right. But yeah, just so many people. I mean, you did, you got everyone, you know, out there. Samuel L. Jackson's been in the basement. There you go. Yeah. I mean, you've had th th these names. Again, I just love, you've had interaction with so many big names. And, you know, you mentioned growing up, you really loved movies. Yeah. And I imagine part of that you did say was, the experience of going to mm -hmm. the movies, right? right? And mm -hmm. we haven't we haven't done that to the level we did before. Yeah. Um, how had, how did that affect you? Well, all of a sudden, because it used to be we'd go to screenings like every week, you yeah. know, or a couple of times a week. 
Well, next thing you know, they started sending us screener links, mm. which in the beginning you're thinking, ah, oh, but then after a while it's like, I'm in my house. I can pause it if I want. It was like, this is great. Yeah. This is great. There were some movies that they didn't want to do, you know, because they were just such big epics. So that's why they held them up. Like, you know, even like the James Bond movie. Sure. They wanted that to be in a theater, especially for the reason that this was Daniel Craig's last one. Yeah. So that's why they kept holding it off, holding it off, holding it off. And also part of the rumor was they held it off so much that the equipment or the technology they were had in the movie had changed. Oh my god! Because it's like, I'm just making this up like if it was Nokia who gave him the phone. Sure. By the time it was ready to come out, the phone he had was old. Oh my god! So they had to go back and reshoot you know, those parts. I love as a film critic, it sounds like you have a lot of back inside information too about these things. Like you give us the, the dirt and the details there we you may know. not see anywhere else. <laughs> and so, um, gosh, that do you think we're going to go back to, to the theater going uh, ways we were? Like, I again, as a kid, I can oh. remember like waiting outside. I mean, we were talking about the Star Wars movies, mm -hmm. you know, waiting in line outside to get that movie ticket. Are we going to go back there? I hope so. I mean, th I think things are beginning to pick up. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been a few times now, but usually that's a, a critic's screening so it's only like five of us you know in there in the first place but uh like when spider-man opened up that weekend i happened to be at one of the local theaters it was jam-packed yeah but i think people are going to begin to go back a little bit more because again economically it's one of the best nights out mm -hmm. you know i mean i think for the most part your first date when you're in high school was probably to go to the movie sure or you know something like that, yeah, and then even yeah. you just want to get out of the house, you know, and leave everything behind. It's still the great escape. It is, and I think what I'm seeing too, um, as we're going into the break, so quickly the time has gone by. My gosh. Um, the resurgence of small town theaters, mm -hmm. like you know, I live near Farmington. You've got the the main run movies yeah. right downtown, and and people want to get back to that. They love that. Mm -hmm. So, and I love talking to you, but we have to take another break. I love talking so to you So we'll too. be right back. Um, we don't know. You don't want to miss the rest of our show. Stay tuned. You're going to hear all about Greg's um, special relationship to Michigan and his work outside of the industry. He has hobbies too. Stay <laughs> tuned. We'll let you hear about him. He says he's dizzy and he's losing his balance. I'm like, oh, you want me to take you to a doctor? He's like, no, I'm going to look up the symptoms. I said, your symptoms are you're dizzy and you're losing your balance. So he said, I can't get on the internet because my arm is numb. I said, well, use your good arm and dial 911. Stroke's no joke. If you or someone you love is showing symptoms of stroke, don't wait because it might be too late. Dial 911. Time lost is brain lost. Do you like this top? So gay. Really? Yeah, it's totally gay. You know, you really shouldn't say that. <laughs> say what? Well, say that something's gay when you mean it's bad. It's insulting. What if every time something was bad, everybody said, oh, that's so girl wearing a skirt as a top. Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Those are cute jeans, though. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Madani University's Broadcast and Cinema Arts program is preparing me for the future. I'm learning from industry professionals, making connections, and honing my skills from hands-on experience every day. The professors are dedicated to my success, instilling professionalism, creative thinking, and a strong work ethic. Join Madani University's Broadcast and Cinema Arts program. Earn your Bachelor's of Arts and take that first step towards your dreams. Hi, I'm Peter, and there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com.
Welcome back to Celebrate Michigan. I'm Chris Benson. We're here in the studio with Greg Russell. We're talking about all the things with him. It's always a great, great time when he's on the show. Uh, Greg, yes. um, I know you, you work a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. you. I, everywhere I go, I feel like I see you. <laughs> I see, you know, there's the movie show plus, mm -hmm. there's, you know, podcasts, there's, there's all, you're everywhere. Um, you've got this, before I ask this, actually, you've got this shirt. Tell me about the shirt oh. that you're wearing right now. Uh, this is my own brand. It's called My D Shirt, the happiest shirt you'll wear. There it is. And just kind of came up with this idea because I love our city and I love yeah. promoting it. And it was just, hey, let me come up with something that people can wear as kind of like their billboard, you know, to show folks about their love of Detroit. I love that. So I, I'm assuming this is a hobby, but I mean, it, mm -hmm. you know, the question I have for you is like, what are your hobbies when you're not working? And I always wow. chuckle when I'm thinking about that because I feel like you're always working. Uh, well, the big joke around my house is, what do I do for fun? I watch a movie on TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's usually one of my, when I say my movies, like I can watch Sideways every day that of the week. That is a great movie though. Yes. That is a great movie. A nice glass of Pinot Noir. Uh-huh. No Merlot. Yes. <laughs> Although I do like Merlot. So. Did I ever tell you the story about that? No. Uh, you Obviously you know the line out of the I movie. I do. I do. I talked to Paul Giamatti again after that and I said, what's going on? You know, how did that go across? He said, he got hate mail from the Merlot manufacturers oh. about, because of what you said, our sales have gone down. And he said, he told them, I didn't write the line. Right, I'm, I'm just reading actor. it. Like that. But you, you embodied it, mm -hmm. Paul Giamatti. <laughs> yep, but that went down. And Pinot Noir, which most folks have never heard of. Wow, doo -doo. hopefully they've gotten through that now. Yes. <laughs> and um, you did tell me something before the show, and I am gonna bring it up. Uh huh. I heard that you like Lifetime movies. I do. Okay, <laughs> Tell me, let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just because they're just kind of like so goofy, campy, yeah, predictable, yeah. and I love yelling at the screen. Yeah. You know, it's because it never fails. There's always a person who is trying to run away from the bad guy. They pick up a plastic water bottle, yes. hit him on the head. Now he falls down like you hit him with a brick. Yes. And then they go flailing through the house, and it's their own house, and they don't know how to get out. And next thing you know, he's behind them, and you're just kind of going, oh my gosh. Is oh my for gosh. real? Yes. Well, that's and other hobbies now. Podcasting. I mm -hmm. found you on a couple podcasts. Is this something that you're dabbling in or yeah, like I, going I, into? I have fun doing them. I do my very own. You know, every once in a while, a Greg Russell Entertainment one called A Day in the Life with Greg Russell. And then I was very fortunate. Uh, the Motown Museum. They've got this new program called Hitsville Now, yeah. and they pegged me to do their podcast for them. Awesome! And so we already started the first part of the series, and it's all about legacies in Detroit, which are family-owned businesses that have gone on for generations. Oh, and so it's just cool. very interesting to find out about you know family businesses. Most don't go past two generations, but we did an interview with one that's up to six or seven now. Wow! Wow! And and. How much effort goes into a podcast? I mean, I listen to them and I'm like, oh, this is, you know, I love this. It's so entertaining while I'm driving or getting ready in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, how difficult is that to produce? It, it's, it all depends because like the thing with Motown, I went out and met the people first. Yeah. So we had a conversation, talked about different things. So then when you sat down with them, it's like you and I. Sure. You know, sure. nice friends talking and, you know, doing it that way. Yeah. Uh, then I did one with Martha Reeves of a Martha and the cool. Vandellas from Motown. That one, I needed no preparation. So, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. to just sit down and just talk about everything. And she just gave me some great stories. But yeah, you usually say like, if it's somebody I don't know, yeah, you do some research on whatever their business is or whatever yeah. it is you're gonna talk with them about. But other than that, I always tell people, the best interviewers, just like you, oh. are the best listeners. Well, you know? I will tell you that one of the podcasts I found, two of the podcasts I found were that you were giving um, podcasts about how to interview. And oh, I yeah. thought, oh my gosh, no pressure on this person <laughs> who's listening to the person who <laughs> gave the swan song and the you know masterclass on how to do interviews. So what is your um, advice for giving good interviews? Well, one, You mentioned listening. Yep, like I said, yeah, you know, always listen to what the person is saying because who knows, they might say, oh, one day we were on set. I got to tell you, afterwards, we went to this restaurant, had a great time, and blah, 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 blah. And then you could go, uh-huh. So now tell me about shooting on such and such. No, just say, oh, really? Well, what'd you do? What was yeah. the good time? You know, follow along like that. Okay. And everybody has their own interviewing, you know, way. Yeah. And that's not funny. Yours and mine are alike. It's a friendly conversation. I mean, this isn't an interview. This is two friends talking. Exactly. And, you know, exchanging stories. And if that's what you get into, you know, do it that way. I've had people before, like some of the stars, when we got done just saying, this was like sitting around with a buddy, the only thing missing was a beer. 
you know. <laughs> so. so talking about those interviews with the stars, I, I hate to have you pick one, but w have you done one recently that stands out in your mind? Since you can just drop these names, oh. like, you know. Last week, Mark Wahlberg. Oh. <laughs> one of my favorites. The other guys, he is genius in that movie. Yes, Please, he is. tell us about He's this got interview. a new movie called Father Stew, okay. which is the story about this guy who's kind of a slacker in life, he moves to this small town. He meets this lady who is very religious in the in Catholic uh, yeah. church. And so they're dating and she's changing him around, you know, making him a more religious person. Then finally he goes, I want to become a priest. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's a true story, too. Oh, really? Because even when I talked to him, I said, if this was just something somebody made up, people would be going, there's no way. <laughs> This is going to happen. Usually it's yeah. the other way around. You become a priest, then you meet somebody and drop, you know, Oh my out. gosh. <laughs> but yeah, he was just so great. And the best part is when we started the interview, he said, man, great to see you, Greg. Uh, he says, I wish I could be there and give you a hug. And Aww. I said, I wish I could hug you too. I wish I could <laughs> well, hug Mark Wahlberg. Everyone, I'm sure there's tons of people oh. watching who want to mar hug him. Well, I've hugged him before, so you can hug me, and so it's kind of like, you know, Okay, that. it'll be, yes, I will experience that through you. In the last um, few seconds that we have on yeah. the show, um, what are you excited about? What's in the future that you're excited about? Well, you know, still more movie stuff. Also, yeah. I've got a tour business in Detroit called Russell Brothers City Tours. Oh, cool. Started in 2017, and it was going really well, of course, until the pandemic, but now yeah. it's beginning to pick up again. But, you know, just taking people around and showing them our city and how beautiful it is. Where can they find you? How can uh, find you? Go to movieshowplus.com or Russell Brothers City Tours, or just find me on all social media, Greg Russell Movies. It was not hard to find you. I found you easily. <laughs> I'm glad you found your way back to our show. Thank Save you for here. being here today. And thank you. Unfortunately, we're at the end, but we are so glad always to have you with us where we celebrate all the great things happening in uh, the Mitten State. We'll see you next time for Celebrate Michigan. Take care.